Ah, uh, good morning. Welcome to my backyard. Have a cold beverage here. Hope you have a maybe a coffee or something and you've enjoyed our service so far. Welcome to our online campus. I think that's what we should call it. You know, it's virtual, but it's it's very much real. Good things are happening through our online ministry and uh Online doesn't cost any rent. Uh, while it's obviously different from what it's like when we are able to gather together physically, um, we are so glad to have this option and that you're able to access it. And hopefully you have been served by it in some way. And you should know that even when this whole coronavirus thing is over and it will be over one day, the genie is out of the bottle. The toothpaste is out of the tube. This online campus thing will continue. So we are reaching more people, having a greater reach. Maybe the, maybe the lesson is that while, you know, online church doesn't seem to be enough. I mean, it is, let's face it, it's not checking all the boxes of what church should be and could be. I, I think in our modern context of 2020, the brick and mortar church is missing something too if it doesn't have an online presence and uh, a service. So, so we look forward to the day where we're actually able to do both. So again, welcome, especially to people checking us out maybe for the first time. My name is Jonathan. Uh, I also hope that you'll follow us on, uh, on social media and, and check out our website so that you can stay informed and up to date on all things NAC. And we'll put that information up for you right now so you can know how to access that. We're in this series, uh, a series that's maybe asking more questions than, than giving answers. It's, it's the idea that during this very serious, chaotic, uncertain time uh, that we're all going through, by the way, God might be wanting to say something to us. And whatever it is, we want to hear it. It's a bit of a dated reference, but it's, it's like the old Verizon commercial, you know, where the guy keeps walking around, he's looking for cell phone reception. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Um, well, what if God is saying through all that we're going through, can you hear me now? Are you listening? Listen, God didn't make the virus. He didn't cause the virus. He gets no pleasure from the virus. But maybe he would want to redeem this virus, use this virus and all of its chaos and all of its upheaval to talk to us, to talk to you. I mean, he might have our collective attention more than ever. You know, people who might have been kind of spiritually on the fence are now turning to him, praying to him, looking to him like never before. And if so, um, if he is speaking, if he does have our attention, what does he want to say to us? What is it we're supposed to hear? You know, when Jesus was talking to people, teaching people, engaging with people, he had a bit of a catchphrase that he would often say. It wasn't uh, bazinga or uh, live long and prosper or no soup for you. Here's what his catchphrase, and here's one of the times he says it in Matthew. Whoever has ears, let them hear. He would say that over and over again, kind of rhetorically. Hey, you got ears? Good. Then use them. Listen up. So, so what is God wanting to say to us if we could hear him? Over the last couple of weeks, we've, we've talked about um, maybe what God might be wanting to say to us about how we've been living our, our physical lives, this temporal life, uh, what God might want to speak into our financial lives, our relational lives, our race reconciled lives, our spiritual lives. And we've looked at that from kind of a 30,000 foot perspective. And so this week, 
you know, let's bring it down and, and think about what God might be wanting to say about what you're specifically going through. Your layoff, your friend or family member with the virus, or your financial uncertainty, or your quarantine at home challenges, or your loneliness, your downright sadness, this feeling of, of hopelessness. Um, if you're going through what feels like a trial, I suspect there are three questions that have crossed your mind, if not even dominated your thinking. Why me? Why this? Why now? Why am I dealing with this suffering and hardship? And yes, there are these incredible stories of God's intervention. They're so incredible. There's a word for them. They are called miracles. But, but miracles are just that. They're miracles, which means they are rare. They seldom happen. They are miraculous. They are not normative. So if you're not experiencing a miracle right now, and you feel that God has allowed something to happen to you, and you're asking why, well, let's talk about that. And since we're not in a big church auditorium, in fact, it's just me and you, let's, let's get real. And if you'll let me, I, uh, I'd like to walk through it with you as best I can as your pastor. So pretend we're at a, a Starbucks or a favorite patio pub is just you and me and we're just having a conversation trying to sort through all of this tough time and I'd like you just to be honest about your anger and your doubt and you let me be honest because there's some things I'd like to have you think about as we walk through everything that you have to walk through in life right now and you may be asking Lord why me why this? Why now? So let me propose some potential reasons and, and I'll get the first hardest one out of the way, the most uncomfortable one. Could it be that these hard times you're going through act as a warning of sorts? You know, I just had surgery, as some of you know, and with the brief exception of visitation, and a very few minutes in the delivery room in which I almost uh, was not able to stay upright. I've managed to avoid hospitals all my life, praise God. Uh, but years ago, I was experiencing this weird sensation in my leg. I would touch a certain part of my calf and this, this whole electric shock went up through my whole leg. So I started seeking out trusted medical people uh, starting with a massage therapist. I think that's the first medical professional you should always seek out no matter what your symptoms are uh, because who doesn't love a good massage? And uh, I casually start explaining the symptoms I'm going through and she's very disturbed. In fact, she says, you need to go to an emergency right now. I think you have something called DVT, deep vein thrombosis, which I had never heard of. So I thought it would be funny to say, do you, do you smell burnt toast? And why is my left arm going numb? Hilarious, right? Classic signs of stroke. Um, she almost cried. And I was reminded again through humor that I am a, a bad person. So off I went to emerge. And uh, uh, I, by the way, I paid her for the full session with tip. It was partly uh, guilt money. And so I tell Emerge of the symptoms and why I was sent there. And they take blood and I faint. And I awake on a gurney in the middle of the waiting room. All these people staring at me, someone trying to put a drink box straw into my mouth. And um, after that, uh, when they didn't find DVT, I went to the chiropractor. They were convinced they just needed to dig deep into my calf with a jackhammer type device that they had to get from behind lock and key because it hadn't been technically approved for use in Canada. They had bought it on the black market from a communist era Ukraine mental asylum. 
<laughs> I might be exaggerating some of this, but not all of it. So they dig into it, jah, 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 like I had been kicked in the shins by all the jocks from Cobra Kai. And the thing is, as all um, chiropractors tend to say, you just need to come back three times a week for the rest of your life. Legs still hurt. By the way, that does not apply to Shannon Asbury, one of the good ones. Um, then I went to physiotherapy and you notice they always want you to do homework, right? Like take this rubber tube and tie it around your foot and lean against a wall and turn um, counterclockwise while bending at a 45 degree angle. Make sure it's counterclockwise. Uh, and then you should be pulling up on the rubber tube. And if it detaches from your foot and whips up to smack you in the face, you got to start all over. So that didn't work. Though in fairness, um, I wasn't great at doing my homework. I went to an acupuncturist. Can you believe it? Twice, fainted both times, R ruined his leather table with all my sweat. <laughs> I was desperate though. Hey, Jonathan, you know those things that make you faint and think like the world is ending? Yeah, you mean needles? Yeah, how would you feel if we put 65 of them into you all at once? Would that be okay or super traumatizing? And then, you know, some of my more charismatic Christian friends had to pray the spirit of acupuncture out of me, which was a whole other hassle. You know, you start to go, um, the juice isn't quite worth the squeeze here. Like, I think I can live with my electric leg, electric leg. That makes me think of a Christmas story. Um, and then, you know, I let it go, but since moving to Newmarket, the pain got worse. It would actually wake me up at night. And my new family doctor, um, Doogie Hauser, MD, he's a adorable. I think he's 17 years old. He's still young enough to think he can fix everyone. He sends me for this battery of tests, more blood work, more fainting. MRI number one, inject me with uh, radiation or something, but instead of becoming Spider-Man, I just become fainting man. And then MRI number two, uh, more injections, more fainting, me trying to act all nonchalant, half naked in a tube. N neurologist specialist, okay, now we're getting somewhere. You actually need a referral for this. And then off to Ontario's best neurologist surgeon at Sunnybrook. And what he lacks in bedside manner, he makes up for in expertise. So a solution is found. A large tumor is pushing up against a nerve in my leg. And so big props to the Ontario medical system for sticking with it. They were relentless until they got answers. What is my point after this incredibly long illustration that I could have summed up in one sentence? The pain was telling me something. It was telling my body something. The tumor is probably benign, but even so, you know, my quality of life will increase with that out of my body. You know, the, the pain was like a, a check engine light flashing on my body. It's actually the most devastating thing about leprosy, okay? To not feel pain without pain, you become heartbreakingly vulnerable to injury. Dr. Brand, Paul Brand, he wrote that if he could choose one gift for his leprosy patients, he would choose the gift of pain. And sometimes it is a gift. Uh, it's a gift that God chooses for us as well. Good pain, needed pain, God pain to tell us that something we're doing, a way that we're living, a choice that we're making is harmful to us. It's why one of the most important things that you can develop in your soul is a sense of conscience, um, a sensitivity, a, a discernment, a sense of when you are in God's will and when you are not. 
And God wants to, to bring that to us, help us with that. But we often refuse it, right? Look at, the, look at the words from God through the prophet Jeremiah that's recorded in the Old Testament. To whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. And, and when we get that way, God can very well bring the gift of pain into our lives. Now, listen, make sure you know that the Bible does not teach that every time we suffer, it's because we've been sinful or disobedient or turned a deaf ear to God. Don't, please don't hear what I'm not saying. Um, we, are, we all have sin in our life. We all even have patterns of sin. But I believe there can be times where some of the pain, some of the suffering in our life may very well be allowed into our life by God to serve as an early warning system that how we are living, the choices we are making are terribly, terribly harmful to us. And God loves us too much to keep us from that pain because it is the only way we can be protected from even greater pain. That's a tough one. Number two, just a proposal of, of why you might be going through a trial. Could it be God might allow this trial, didn't cause it, but allows it, to drive you to your knees. Let me ask you something that I already know the answer for in my life. I, I bet I know it's true for you too. Are you more prone to go to God when things are good or when things are bad? When is it in your life that you are praying with the, the greatest level of intensity and urgency? When are you most dependent on God, most willing to trust? Uh, most eager to listen, most receptive to what scripture has to say. When, as you look back on your life, have you been most open to turning to God, opening your heart to God, humbling yourself and, and coming to God? Is it in the midst of good times or bad? I know the answer for my life. I think you know the answer for your life. It's in the bad times. This means God might be using pain and suffering in your life to make you look his way and then call you to his side. So not only can it be a warning, it can be a calling to come to him. Look at these words God spoke to a man named Solomon, who at the time was the king of Israel. And, and this is recorded in the book of Second Chronicles in the Bible. And you may not know the verse at the beginning, but if you've been in the church at all, you'll recognize the second part. It starts like this. At times, I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made. See, God can use these times to say, turn to me, look to me. Now, if that way of getting your attention sounds harsh, I'd like to propose it's really not. I'd like to propose it's really an act of love. Like, which is better? To allow someone to go merrily along, separated from God, divorced from a uh, saving relationship with Christ, facing an eternity, separated from God, or to allow whatever it takes to get someone's attention and at least give them the chance to respond. You know, C.S. Lewis famously once called pain God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And then in a personal correspondence to a friend, Lewis noted that 
pain and suffering could even be a reflection of God's severe mercy. <laughs> it's, it's allowed into our life because we would not turn to God any other way. I love that phrase, severe mercy. Um, he'd go on to write, Lewis Wood, that pain as a megaphone is a terrible instrument, but it can also be our only hope. And he, and he loves us too much. He cares about our eternity too much to protect us from, from what it would take to get us to at least consider turning our life to him. Okay, we need to leave it here for a week. I actually have four more possibilities I wanna talk about next week um, and help us wrestle with the question of, of why me, why this, why now? Um, but I wanna be sure that we don't go over long on our teaching on Sundays, especially in the summer. Um, in the meantime, what do we continue to wrestle with these things? What is God saying to you in the midst of the pain you're in, in the midst of this uncertainty and fear? How are you growing? Where do you see God at work? We want to hear from you, okay? This is not, um, how is God speaking to Jonathan? This is a series, how is God speaking to Mac? So be part of our virtual open mic. Share what you think God might be laying on your heart in these days, okay? Record your thoughts, look into a phone, press record, upload it to our video Dropbox. If you're shy, could I just say, do it for our sake because it will bless us. It will contribute to the collective wisdom and beauty of our community. Um, we wanna hear from you. Let me close in prayer. God, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. It took me years to be able to get to this point where I can sincerely say thank you for the pain. Thank you for the hard times. Um, Thank you for the trials, because what they have tended to do is conform me closer to the image of Christ. Teach me things about patience and about maturity. Um, there may be those today who really need a miracle. And so I would pray for that. And I don't want to be glib at all about um, you know, God using our pain, that may, that may not resonate well with somebody listening today. So for those who need a miracle, you are the God of miracles. I, I believe that as sure as I'm sitting here. But even more than that, I thank you that you, you haven't always promised to change our circumstances but you have promised to always, always, always be present in them. Um, be very present to my brothers and sisters right now. I think of some specific names, some specific faces right now who really need the presence of God in their life. They're in a storm and they need your presence, Lord. So I thank you that you've promised to be present, to never leave to never forsake, to never leave us high and dry. So Lord, maybe you'd even in this moment whisper in their ear, I'm here, I'm with you, I've got this. None of this has taken me by surprise. I actually hold the universe in my hands. So Rest assured, I hold your life in my hands and you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a son. You are a daughter of the Most High God. And so, peace. Whisper it in their ear, Lord, I pray. Peace. Amen. Amen. I think it's so great that you are able to participate, engage somewhat, in church, maybe from your uh, cottage, assuming you have a, a Wi-Fi reception. Um, 
I, I keep, please keep, keep engaging, keep watching. I think it's important that we uh, stay on the same page as a church community, hear the same stories, sing the same songs, listen to the same teaching. It, it's, it's just a small thing that helps us stay uh, bonded together, even more so than watching church. Uh, my commission to you today, as it has always been, is not just to watch church, but go, go, be the church. You are a loved people. Do you know that? Do you feel it? Do you believe it? You are. God bless you.